Hey, Speak English Ambassadors, good to see you today. I'm really excited about today's lesson because so many of you have told me when I speak English, I feel like I translate in my head. It makes me slow. I'm not spontaneous. I listen and by the time I translate to understand, the conversation continues and I'm lost. This lesson is going to help you stop translating in your head so you can become more fluent more quickly. Let's go. And before I forget, if you want to find a partner to practice with, so you can practice speaking. I've partnered with the website italki, where you can find a conversation partner. I've used italki personally to find conversation partners to learn Italian and German and found that it's easy, convenient, and great for practicing a language. As part of our partnership, just for the Speak English with Christina community, if you buy one conversation lesson, you get your second lesson for free. So to be sure to get that offer, you need to click on the link below this video. But first, let's see how you can stop translating in your head. First, a quick explanation of why you translate in your head and how to solve that problem. Your native language is not English. If it was, you probably wouldn't be watching this lesson. So, in your brain, there are two or more languages. Think of them as muscles. Let's say your native language is French. You've been exercising your French muscle in your brain for decades. So it's much stronger, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but without the Austrian accent. But the English muscle in your brain, you've only been exercising it for a few years. And probably not consistently. A trip to the USA here, a few meetings in English there, maybe some emails in English a few times a day. So the English muscle in your brain is a little like... Your English muscle has a lot less training than your French muscle or your native language muscle. So you need to start working out your English muscle. Irregular verbs. Do, did, done. To stop translating in your head, you need to get away from using your native language to understand and speak English. That means immersion. Now, not necessarily taking a month to go live in an English-speaking country. That's great, but it's not always feasible. But you can create your own immersion at home. Here's how. First, start using an English-only dictionary when you need to find the definition of an English word. Maybe today you use Google Translate or Word Reference to find translations. Nope, not anymore. Here's a new tool for you, the Merriam-Webster Learner's Dictionary. And I'll also put the link below the video. It's an English-English dictionary online, a monolingual dictionary. This way, when you hear or see a new word in English, you can look for it in the monolingual dictionary. 
You're learning how to describe a word in English, how to think about a new word in English, and you're getting more exposure to English by reading the description. And that's a little exercise for your English muscle. If you want to practice using English, but you have no one to practice with, start by thinking in English to yourself. You may think, yeah, but no one is there to correct me. And that's okay, honestly. Don't think that you have to use perfect grammar 100% of the time. To be honest, if you did, it wouldn't always sound very natural. We native speakers mess up our own language so much. It's better to get the practice in English by thinking in English and making mistakes than to not think in English because you're worried about mistakes. Plus, while you're thinking in English, if you're not 100% sure about the language you use, make a note of it somewhere and check it later. For example, you can use a little language notebook or note it on your smartphone and send an email to yourself. Whatever system that you use to note ideas or reminders to yourself. Note the questions that you have about English. Literally, write the word. What is the English word for intrus? And then look for the word later when you have the time. This also works well for when you're watching movies, TV series, or reading. But don't try to note every new word because that will just take the fun out of the experience. But if you hear or read the word a lot of times and you don't know what it is, then just take 30 seconds, probably less, uh, and note it somewhere and look for the definition later, preferably with your monolingual online dictionary. The next step is to speak in English, to practice speaking. <laughs> yes, talk to yourself out loud, preferably when you're alone, but you can do it around other people. They might think you're crazy, but hey, at least you're doing something. It's a bit like when I go jogging and I come back home and Roman says, how long did you run? And I say, 30 minutes. And he responds, that's all, no more. And I just respond, yeah, but that's 30 minutes where I went jogging and you sat on the couch. Oh snap. So don't be afraid to talk to yourself. Describe the things around you. Play little scenarios in your head. Ask questions to yourself in your head. When, when I'm learning a language, these are my favorite techniques. Ah, ich habe eine Kaffee. Möchtest du einen Kaffee? Stop, just stop. But, but I'm learning German and you're not. That's not the problem. So just to recap, to stop translating in your head, you need to exercise your English muscle. Immerse yourself in English with an English English dictionary Think to yourself in English to get used to thinking in English and speak to yourself in English all the time to increase your reflexes. And with time, you'll stop translating in your head and thinking directly in English. But you have to be regular with this. That's the key. Now, what about you? 
What other techniques or tools do you use to do English regularly? Share them in the comments because it can really help other members of the Speak English community. And if you want someone to practice English with, a real person, be sure to check out the link to italki below this video. And like I said, since you're a part of the Speak English community, thank you, you'll get your second lesson free when you buy your first lesson. And now you have no excuses for not practicing. All right, you guys, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching Speak English with Christina, and I'll see you next time.